Which states shifted the most on a presidential level between 2016 and 2020? Today on Political Access, we're going to go through each state and see what the biggest changes are. I've already done this for some other elections, so take a look at those videos if you'd like. But this is from the most recent two, so I made my own spreadsheet, even though I'm sure this data is on other sites. But let's get started here. We've got the states here in the first column. Next, we've got the Democratic vote in 2016. That is Hillary Clinton, followed by the Republican vote in 2016. That is Donald Trump. Next, the Democratic vote in 2020. That is Joe Biden, followed by the Republican vote in 2020. That is Donald Trump again. Next, we've got the Democratic shifts between those two years, followed by the Republican shifts. And finally, the last column. That is the net change between the two parties, between the two elections. And I also have shading in this last column. The light colors are under a five-point shift. The solid colors are 5 to 9.9, .9, and the darkest colors would be 10 or up, but there are none of those for this particular shift. It's only between two elections. There's not that many wild swings in this short of a time span. So I'm sure almost everybody remembers both of these elections very well. Donald Trump was running for re-election. There was a lot of different things happening in 2020 at that time. And the short result here is Trump generally did a little bit worse in the vast majority of states. You can come up with your own reasons as to why that might be. And every election will have their specific nuances. But the one thing I will mention is third-party candidates, they do generally take away a little bit of vote from certain candidates. And in 2016, Gary Johnson, the Libertarian, he got over 3% of the vote nationally. And there was a number of states where he actually got over 5% of the vote. In 2020, the third-party candidate vote share did drop. And that's why you'll see in a lot of these states, both the Democrats and the Republicans actually improved on their margins from 2016. But generally, the Democrats improved more than the Republicans. So having said all that, let's get started here in Alabama. In 2016, Hillary Clinton, the Democrat, got 34.5% of the vote, and Donald Trump got 62.1%. Jump ahead to 2020, Joe Biden, the Democrat, got 36.6%, and Donald Trump got 62%. That is a net gain of 2.1 for the Democrats and a net loss of 0.1% for the Republicans. And that is a total net change of 2.2 in favor of the Democrats. Now we can go through the rest of these states much quicker now. And next we have Alaska. That was a 4.7% shift toward the Democrats. Arizona had a 3.8% shift away from the Republicans and toward the Democrats. Arkansas, very little change, 0.7 gain for the Republicans. California actually shifted toward the right very slightly by nine-tenths of a percent. In Colorado, that took a big step toward the left by 8.6%. Connecticut also went 6.3 toward the left. Similarly, Delaware also went in that direction by 7.5 points. Florida, that's a key state that has shifted toward the Republicans by 2.1%. Georgia has been a blue-trending state, and it has moved in that direction by 5.5 points. Next in Hawaii, that is a blue state, and we could see, like most of the states, both parties did gain there. Democrats gained eight-tenths of a percent. Republicans gained 3.9. That does result in a 3.1% shift toward the Republicans. Next in Idaho, that's a 1% gain for the Democrats. Illinois, very little change, 0.3 toward the Democrats. Indiana also went toward the Democrats by 2.9. Iowa went in that direction by 1.3. Kansas went a little farther in that direction by 5.8. Kentucky also 3.9 in that direction. Louisiana toward the Democrats by 1%. Maine as well, another 6.2% away from the Republicans and toward the Democrats. In Maryland, there was a similar shift toward the Democrats by 6.8. Again, in Massachusetts by 6.3%. Michigan went 2.5% toward the left. In Minnesota, 5.6% away from the GOP toward the Democrats. Mississippi shifted 1.3% toward the Democrats as well as Missouri by 3.1%. Montana did the same by 4.1%. Nebraska, 6% toward the left. The next state is Nevada, and that actually had no net change. If you go down to the tenth of a percentage point, both parties gained 2.2%, and that results in no change. Moving on to New Hampshire, that had a nice shift toward the Democrats by 7%. New Jersey went in that direction by a smaller 1.8%. Next to New Mexico, in 2016, that's where Gary Johnson actually got his highest level of support, and it was over 9%. He was previously the governor of New Mexico, so that would be why his total was higher. So in 2020, he was not on the ballot anymore. 
and both parties did increase their vote share. The Democrats did it by six, Republicans by three and a half, and that results in a net shift of two and a half toward the Democrats. Next in New York, that shifted very little, only 0.6 toward the Democrats. North Carolina went 2.3 away from the GOP. North Dakota went 2.5 away from the GOP. In Ohio, that actually also had no net change. Both parties gained 2% over 2016, and there was no net change for either party. Moving on to Oklahoma, that went 3.3 away from the Republicans and toward the Democrats. In Oregon, that went 5.1 toward the Democrats. Pennsylvania shifted very slightly, only a half a point toward the left. Rhode Island went 5.3 toward the left. South Carolina, 2.5 toward the Democrats. South Dakota, 3.6 toward the Democrats. Also in Tennessee, toward the Democrats by 2.8. How about in Texas? We know that is becoming a little bit bluer of a state. We could see Democrats gain 3.3. Republicans only lost 0.1%. But that does result in a 3.4% shift toward the Democrats. Next in Utah, that actually had a shift back toward the Republicans and that was by 2.4%. That might be explained by 2016 Evan McMullen. He ran for president. He was from Utah, and he got over 21% of the vote. So in 2020, he was not on the ballot. Both parties gained double digits, and Republicans came out on top. Let's go on to Vermont. That had the biggest shift of all, and that was 9.5 points toward the Democrats. That would be explained by, in 2016, Bernie Sanders. He got over 5% of the vote in Vermont as a write-in candidate. 2020, that didn't happen, and the vast majority of that went toward Joe Biden. Next state is Virginia, and that went 4.8 toward the Democrats. And moving out of Washington state, that went 3.5 toward the Democrats. West Virginia also did not shift toward the Republicans this time. It went back toward the Democrats by 3.2%. Wisconsin, a mild 1.4 toward the left. And finally, the last state is Wyoming. That is a red state, but that got a little bit bluer this time by 3%. So those are all the states and all the shifts, but we can go one step farther to help visualize this data and apply it to a map. And here it is. As you already know, this is not pretty for the Republicans. As I already said, the vast majority of states did shift toward the Democrats, usually by only a few percentage points. Some of the states were by even less, and some of the states were by over five points. Republicans did have some scattered gains here, including in a state like California and Hawaii, states we know that are not competitive at all. And even seeing all this blue on here, we know that the election was very close in the Electoral College. It did come down to a handful of states with very narrow margins. So if Donald Trump just did slightly better, it might have been a different story. So are there any real takeaways here? Well, there might be some. We could see that the Rust Belt, it was moving toward the Republicans. At this point, looks like those trends have stalled or reversed slightly. We never know which way they're going to go next time, but this time they took a small step back toward the Democrats. In Florida, we know that state has kept on going to the right, and a lot of these other shifts are not really all that significant, even though there's a lot of blue on this map. But really, the only thing we can do from this point is try to anticipate where the trends are going to go in two years, in 2024. That's much easier said than done, but if you do like seeing the shifts between two elections, especially the two most recent presidential, then this is how the map turned out. So let me know in the comments, what are your thoughts on any of the shifts in any of these states? And which way do you think the trends might go next time? Let me know down below. And on your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.